And the Lord's leading of this testimony Tuesday here, he led me to my grandma's testimony, which was totally unexpected. I had received in 2001 this package in the mail, and it was from my aunt to me, and I don't ever remember receiving it. Oh. And in 2001, when it was sent, I thought, why didn't I know I got this? And I thought, I just got married. We bought a house. 9-11 had happened. My dad had passed. Work was a little bit on a stress level. And this came to my office and it said photos on it. And somehow it ended up in a box of photos at my house. <laughs> and I found this when I was looking for pictures to do my testimony that Mary had asked for. And I opened it up and it was 18 handwritten pages of my grandmother's testimony oh, wow. with pictures of my great and my great greats of pictures of them when they were young. I mean, it was amazing. So today I wanted to share with you my grandma's legacy and encourage you, each one of you, to put yours down and put it away. Because you don't know, that was 23 years ago I received this. So I'm not going to read you the whole 18 pages today. <laughs> but I am going to share with you some highlights on it. And it's in my grandmother's handwriting. So I've read it enough to decipher, but I might struggle here. But it's just her story. And she was born in 1915. And she passed in 1989. And I didn't know a lot of this about my grandma. Because of a divorce, I saw my grandma. I loved my grandma. I felt special. But I didn't know any of this. So I share it with you to encourage you and also to leave your legacy. So I'll start with. Um, my sister started to take me to Sunday school when I was about a year old. So I knew about God when I was very young. My dad asked me when I was very young as we were sitting on Maplewood Avenue and we watched people on the streets below. Once there he said, what, what do they teach you in Sunday school? And I said, I was about three at the time, well, God made the earth, all the people and the sun and the moon. And oh, daddy, look at the moon. <laughs> when I was five, we moved out on the farm. I was there. I noticed that I had a friend with me when I was outdoors by myself. Since I grew up, I knew it was an angel. When I was six and it was March and the creeks were high and roaring and the big ice was floating away in it, Ma took us across the road about four blocks, city blocks away, and Mrs. Schultz and her four kids were there and the neighbor could, Alan Keeser, who lived across the road from the Schultzes. And he came out there as well. So we're standing there watching the water roar and the chunks of ice bouncing around. When Adam Kiesler pushed me in the creek, oh, I man. rolled and tumbled and I felt the ice chunks hit me. But I remember I did not get scared. I floated a short ways away and then I saw a willow branch right in front of me. And automatically I reached for it with my wet mittens. I grabbed it and I pulled myself out of the creek. Ma took me home, gave me a bath and put me to bed. I realized since that that was God there and he put that branch like a beacon of light. How old was she then? Six. I was 10 when we moved back to town, and that summer I was 11, and the Nazarene Church had an evangelist meeting about two blocks down the street. Ma, Margaret, and I went every night, but one night Ma didn't feel like going, so Margaret took me. I have no idea what the whole sermon was about until they asked people to come forward. Now, I didn't know what that meant, only that I saw people go forward and kneel there. So I jumped up and went forward, and Margaret followed. I don't remember what I prayed, but the preacher came and asked me some questions. And I remember I answered, and we talked some more. And the last I said was, last I remember is he told me, well, go to Sunday school and to church. 
But what do you, other than that, I don't remember much. <laughs> okay. In 1958, oh, wait a minute, I'll go back and read this part. Uh, by, uh, by October, we'd found a house to buy and moved to Tuna Avenue. I loved it there because we had a great big hill. <laughs> From there, nothing unusual happened. Um, and I, but I do remember I was never afraid. And I found out in the first year that I had a goiter. In 1953, we had just moved back to Bradford from Freiburg and my goiter started giving me trouble. Once I went to the hospital and Dr. Joe said my heart was beating too slow. And then the next time it was going too fast. So he said, surgery. <laughs> well, he operated. Dr. Bob and Dr. Jim helped him. They found the goiter growing around everything in my neck. He said he cut every nerve in my neck just to get it out. But the stumper was my voice box. He had, somebody said that, he had to cut a nerve to get it out. But which one? There were two nerves. And if he cut the wrong one, it would destroy my speech. And then I wouldn't be able to talk. So the three decided to pray for guidance. Mm -hmm. They decided which nerve to cut and Joe was going to cut, but he cut the other one. Mm. Bob says, Joe, that's the wrong one. Mm. Joe said, maybe so, but who am I to take God's hand off mine? Oh. So they let me wake up a bit to see if I could talk. <laughs> I did. And I said, thank you, God, for Dr. Joe. <laughs> he told me before I went home that he felt a hand just cover his and move it to the other nerve. Oh so he wow. said, when you get home, get down on your knees and thank him. Wow. I did, and wow. I still do. Wow. Um, then when Jan was a year old in J5, that's my dad, I had a dream. We lived in Orsbury yet, and I thought I stood in the kitchen sink looking out of the window with Jan in my arms. And I saw Jesus coming down in the sky, sitting on a throne of clouds and the gorgeous colors. I tell Jay, go get your daddy, who was in the backyard. But Jesus says, no, not yet, not for a long time yet. Later that year, Herb, which was my grandpa, accepted Christ and was baptized into the church. Herb told me later when Jake baptized him, he got a very strong light sort of in his head and he started to cry and so did Jake. In 1960, we were driving out here and along the way, I prayed God would ride with us. The old car did okay until we were almost into Oregon. They drove from Bradford, Pennsylvania across to wow. Oregon because our, my family had come out. Uh, we came over a camp hill and the motor started to knock and Herb says, oh darn, bearings. So we started down the hill with the motor shut off and me a praying. At the bottom was Willow, California and we coasted right into a Plymouth garage with the motel next door and a restaurant on the corner in the back. <laughs> They got it fixed by the next day at noon. If we'd have gone through Williams or had shopped a mile outside, we would have been in the middle of a lot of country. Oh, wow. Wow. The next selling, God hollered at me. <laughs> when we lived in over Perry's freezers, <laughs> I went to Emmis. I had a number of jobs at the church. I was president of my circle. And we thought it would be nice to study about women of the Bible. And we decided next meeting to start. We had Reverend Peterson's mother-in-law in our circle. And she trotted right home and told him. So Wednesday, I went in to do the bulletins and he practically climbed our frames. <laughs> he blamed me mostly. But these lessons we had were so dry, and I thought so. So I proceeded to tell him that we, how we felt. 
I got orders not to change the lessons. Next day, I was really mad and I was standing ironing and I was talking to God about it all. <laughs> and I said, I just got a notion to quit there. That's when God let me know he was around and as loud as a man shouting, he said out loud to me, Gertrude, you promised to serve. The apartment seemed to shake and so did I. I dropped my <laughs> iron on the floor. I never dreamed God would shout loud at you, but he does. And today I'm glad he did. It wasn't quiet whisper that I heard, but a real shout. And I knew God was there. I've heard him in a couple times since then. One time, Reverend Aid came to the house, and it was noon, and Herb was home for lunch, but he had to go back before one. So Reverend Aid and I sat and gabbed. I never heard any preacher teach on the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and couldn't explain how the three were one when it was so clear in their mind. So I asked Reverend Aid. I'd asked Reverend Peterson once, and he explained it, it was just a perfect circle and no one can understand it. So Reverend A tried and he didn't do that much better. <laughs> so when he left, I just sighed a very large sigh and said, Lord, can you tell me about how this three in one works so I can explain it too? And like a shout again, there it was. And he said, what did he say? We are three separate persons in one mind. July 23rd. Well, happy birthday, old gal. You're 72. Doesn't seem possible. But all things are possible with God. With all his wonder. I don't know, at this age, I don't know if I'll see the next year. But all are now a gift of God. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. That is really cool. Yeah. yeah. So these are all pictures of my grandma. You can look at them. But it was just, there's 18 pages and there's more stories about her dad and all kinds of things. But